Hello everybody and welcome to episode number 5 of my Moncton Navigators franchise here on East Coast Gaming. Uh, if you looked at the last episode, despite being a seller at the deadline and selling veterans such as Derek Stepan, Justin Williams, and goaltender UC Soros, uh, we <laughs> somehow made the playoffs with, I don't know why I clicked back on that, but we somehow made the playoffs with this lineup. I mean, I've seen AHL teams that could compete against this, but look, I'm not going to question it. And uh, we'll just, <laughs> I mean, we'll do, we'll just go for it. Um, so we have Lazarev, Strom, Sanford, which is a decent line. After that, I mean, we have Gurianov was a good player, but oof, I mean, it, it drops off significantly and on the blue line I mean we have Sergachev but other than that I mean oof uh, it's not looking too good but we did make the playoffs we had 96 points in the regular season and we face a Buffalo Sabres team who has a familiar face uh, in net <laughs> a Buffalo Sabres team who has Jack Eichel uh, their bottom six is about as strong as ours. I'd say maybe even a bit weaker. And we do have the best defenseman out of all. But they do have the one-two combo here of Dahlin and Ristolainen. Uh, and, <laughs> I mean, we did trade UC Saros to Buffalo. To, uh, you know, I, th I thought we were going to maybe tank for a bit of a draft pick and uh, build, build up a, a dynasty. But that's not looking like that's the case. And... Uh, we made the playoffs, and now we get to face off against our former goaltender, UC Saros, in the first round. So, uh, might as well just get at it. Uh, so, I'll real-time sim every game of the playoffs for sure. Uh, so, without further ado, here is Moncton Navigator's first appearance. Excuse me, take a drink here. First appearance in the playoffs. In year number one, uh, one of only two expansion teams to have a 500 record, I believe, let alone make the playoffs. Let's see if we can get some of that Golden Knights magic. So, Moncton Buffalo, first period. Ooh, 2-2. Two -two. Sanford, Middlestad, McCabe, and then Lazarev gets one on Soros. Looks like we're playing really close to the net here. We're crashing the net. We got putting heart out there middle stat scores again on the power play on Montambo and third period oh my goodness <laughs> Lazarev and Myers the Moncton native scores the winning goal in the first playoff game for Moncton for the Navigators and uh, we win we win game number one um, after watching the previous ep episode, it's, came, it's come to my attention that I may have sounded a bit negative <laughs> while uh, talking about the team and, and whatnot. And uh, I want to assure everybody here that uh, I definitely don't want to lose. That's not the, the objective here. I mean, I didn't think that we were 100% ready for the playoffs. And so I, I made a decision that was best for uh, the future of this team. But, uh, I mean, I'm totally into this playoff run. Uh, I'm really happy that we made the playoffs. And for players like Ivan Lazarev, who had three points in his first playoff game, this is going to be some very valuable experience. And who knows, we might get a Cinderella run going here. So game number two against the Buffalo Sabres. Let's see here. Can we move up 2-0 in the series? First period. Makoshin draws into the lineup and scores, but then Eric Stahl counters on Montambo. Second period, my goodness, Andrew Kopp and Matt Roy. And all of a sudden, uh, the Moncton Navigators <laughs> are looking like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm just going to say we're looking like we're going to take a 2-0 lead here, but... Uh, Buffalo storms right back. Wayne Simmons, Skinner, and Middlestad scores the winning goal almost from the corner. Middlestad's having a good series so far. Um, so, 
Uh, Gambrell injured. That's not good. Riley Stotts drops into the lineup. Um, that makes a plus. All right. Let's go here. Let's go. Game number three. Oh, that's a scout that I signed to scout in Russia. So, a lot of series are 2-0 here. 2-0 for Vegas. 2-0 Winnipeg. 2-0 Colorado. 1-1 one one, one to one for the Ducks and the Sharks. 1-1 one one for us and the Sabres. Oh, and Eastern Conference is a lot tighter. Let's go. Game number three here, folks. So, yeah, like I was saying, I'm, I'm completely happy that we made the playoffs. And I, I want this simulation to... Uh, surprise a lot of people but looking at it on paper we are not a playoff team middlestad again if middlestad keeps this going i mean he's he might realize his full potential buffalo wins game number three sadly but uh we did definitely outshoot them in that period ethan bear can come back that's good that's that's good so McCoshin, excuse me, Bear, and I'll put Bear there. Oh, that's too bad. Too bad that Taze and Roy. If I put Taze and Roy on that line, no, that doesn't work. Might as well just put that. Let's put Bear on that first line to get some more offense. All right, game number four. This would be an important one here, folks. This would be an important one. One to one, Gurianov and Stahl. Oh, Jeff Skinner on Montombo and Zach Sanford. Middlestat again, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness, Middlestat, how many goals does he have? It's got to be about five or six for sure. It seems like it, anyways. And after a game one victory. Um, we face a 3-1 deficit here in this series. And, uh, I mean, I can't say I'm super shocked, but I was, I was, I was wanting the Cinderella run. I was wanting it. And uh, it's not looking like we're going to get it. So. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, one to two. All right, Steen on the power play here, and we're not going away here. So let's really real time simulate. Oh yeah, Montour scores on Montombo. Can we make a little bit of a comeback here? Come on, let's get one. That's right, Brendan Lemieux. And we're still down. Let's jump in there. Um. I don't really know how to do it, but oh, I think that's it. Let's just go with the CPU versus CPU game. I'll let the CPU control itself, and uh, let's just jump in there for the last minute. Might be able to see uh, our franchise here. Go at it in the playoff. Who knows? We might have a little bit of a miracle run here. So... 125 left, 128, excuse me. I love those, I like those away jerseys a lot more than I thought I did. I tried for something different there with the jerseys and Buffalo's playing keep away at this point. All right, oh, oh here comes Jimmy VC pulling the goaltender, that's a terrible, oh my goodness, VC. oh no way. <laughs> no way. Lazarev ties the game. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it, folks. Ivan Lazarev ties the game with 42 seconds. I didn't touch anything. Lazarev ties the game. All right. Now I'm hoping that this doesn't go on really far into overtime. <laughs> uh, 
Who knows? We might be able to score one here. Lazarus from VC and Strom. Oh, and I might have spoken too soon here. Sergachev. Sanford cutting into the middle. And oh my god. Holy Mac. I'm getting excited here. I'm getting excited. A lot more excited than I thought I was going to get. Oh, Olafson off the wall. Oh, that's a good block. That's a good play defensively. I don't know what that was, but Montombo frees that. All right. Sergachev. I mean, that's only in the that's only in the playoffs in the first round. So, and we got to watch Middlestad. If I had to put my money on anybody to score the game. The game winner would be Middlestad because he's been dominant this series. So Andrew Kopp, Gurianov. Oh, what is he doing out of the net? My goodness. All right. I mean, we'll just watch the first three or four minutes of overtime maybe, and hopefully somebody pops one in there real quick. Lazarev tying goal there. He's got the A on his jersey now. Probably since I traded my captain, Williams. And I actually, let's just simulate it. Let's just simulate overtime. Can EA give us a win here? Can EA give us a win? Yes, EA can give us a win. A 4 3 overtime win. And the Navigators stay alive. Did we already lose in the AHL? I think we might have lost in the AHL already. Yeah, we did. Lost in the AHL. So now, NHL time. All right, that's a domination by Buffalo, but Montembeau is keeping us in the game here. Who's going to score first? Let's go minute by minute. Power play Buffalo. Reinhardt on the power play. And Simmons right after. Oh, okay, yeah. I believe this is the end of the Moncton Navigators for this year. A power play late. Can't get anything going. And it's looking like Yuzi Soros, our former goaltender, is going to shut us out here in game number six. That's exactly what happens. And... Your Moncton Navigators are eliminated in year number one. I mean, put up quite the effort here. Let's just see in the six games. I see Gurianov there, but I see Gurianov. Who else made a bit of a difference here? All right, Gurianov, Steen, the veteran. Who we, I don't know. Can if he asks for. If he asks for very little, I might bring him back. I don't know. Kopp Lazarev with four points, but that all-important third goal there was incredible. Sanford, Strom, I mean, all right. The boys did pretty decent. They did pretty decent. All right. Um, so let's just simulate to the draft, shall we? Let's look at retirements and stuff. Both teams. So I'd be curious to look here. We're about at this range being eliminated. All right, so we're about here. Um, I'd say we need a defenseman, but I wouldn't say no to a good forward either. I'd say we need a defenseman, though. And I looked at a couple of them earlier, and one of them that really stood out was this Russian here in the second, in the, sorry, Latvian, in the second round, Boris Kasparitis. He looks pretty good. He looks pretty good for a 38th or 37th overall pick, so we might try to get him. <clears throat> but we really need some defense. Um in the prospect pool. 
the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Justin Williams, Mr. Game 7. I'd be curious to see if they won it in seven games. But Mr. Game 7, I'm assuming he might retire. And he can retire on top because we traded him. Nashville gets the first overall pick. So Nashville will get probably Adurati. And Toronto can get another stud to play with Marner and Matthews because they won the second pick. Ouch. Okay. Um, so a couple options here in my head, uh, one of them being climbing up a few spots to get one of these guys, a Ponikarovsky, Ulf Hedman, Lambos, Brant Clark, Daniel Chaika. I'd love to get maybe one of these guys and I'm not far behind. Um, so that would be maybe the play. I don't know. This Backstrom guy looks pretty decent. He looks pretty decent. Let's scout his potential, see if it's going to uncover before. Before, But we might climb up. Thing is, we're for sure going to target defensemen in this draft. Uh, we need them. And... That's definitely what we're going to go after. Um, so retired players. Hosa, Zetterberg, Gabrick, Backus, Stafford. Mr. Game 7 is coming back here, guys. There's not a lot of players, really, that decided to retire. Hosa being Zetterberg. Not a lot of active players. Goalies, do we have any goalies? I mean, nobody really decided to retire who's still playing. So that's going to be interesting. A lot of coaches. David Backus is now a scout. Uh, and that's it. Now we're at the NHL entry draft. We might go check the awards and stuff to finish off year one and then. I might do the draft in this episode. I don't know. I'll have to go check how long this episode has been already. So Pittsburgh wins the President's Trophy, the Stanley Cup, and the Prince of Wales. They played Anaheim in the uh, Stanley Cup Finals. Crosby with a North Ross. Malkin Hart. Hedman with the Norris. Lady Bing goes to Pedersen. Lafreniere gets the Calder. Um, Malkin... Con Smythe, Vezina for DeSmith, DeSmith, Yossi, Anaheim Ducks coach gets the Jack Adams, the Bergeron wins the Patrice Bergeron trophy, I swear to God, he's probably got about 10 at home, Malkin, I mean this was a big year for the Penguins, it's pretty evident looking at the, at the trophies, and um, I'm curious, did they win a couple in game Seven, game six, game six. No, they, oh, yeah, the first round. Might have used them in the first round. Zach Sanford, an 85 overall. Hmm, that's really interesting. Did anybody else go up a bit? Did anybody else go up? 85 overall. He's still 83. 85, I'll take it. I'll definitely take that. Sergachev's down to an 87. Maybe because of his playoff performance. I don't know. Donsko is an 83. Cop. Steen went up. Lazarev went down. That's pretty weird. All right. Well, that's maybe not permanent. So, kind of scares me that Lazarev did go down, though. He was definitely an 83. All right. Well, um, I'll end the episode here. Uh, and we'll come back with episode six, which is going to be the entry draft and free agency. So, um, this might have been a little bit of a shorter episode, but it was the playoffs, and uh, I mean, had to make it, uh, had to make it a, an occasion. Uh, the Navigators made the playoffs in their first year, which is pretty impressive. Can't wait to see where the team's headed after this. Um, have a strong NHL entry draft, a good 
free agency and get a couple of young guns going. I'm thinking Costin and Perfetti are going to be ready for next year. And uh, who knows? Who knows where this franchise is going to go? So until episode six, this is East Coast Gaming signing out. Thanks for watching.